I'm um, the head of the Industrial Institute. It is a research center uh, near Brussels, 50 kilometers from Brussels in the uh, federal state called Wallonia. And uh, there we work with Jerry for, uh, I think, uh, 15 years as a Millennium Project Brussels Serial Node. And I'm also teaching foresight and uh, uh, history of institution and uh, society in Mons University and foresight in Paris uh, Diderot University. Um, the Destroy Institute has developed what we have called a one year policy lab, trying to move from uh, public uh, policies to collective policies. Mm -hmm. So in the framework of uh, governance, <coughs> for example, we are working with the European Commission about uh, the, the future of government, uh, the DG uh, research, uh, and also we are working on the field uh, building uh, citizen panels with the inside the Parliament of Wallonia. Mm -hmm. the, the, the second one we have done, that, that's what Fauda said, how to really uh, involve the people, commit the people. So these, these people, they, are, they were uh, 30. Uh, we uh, had the opportunity to work with them during five all days on Saturdays. They were chosen by uh, among the uh, list of voters uh, in Wallonia, representative in gender and richness, uh, uh, different parts of the countries, age and so on, the population. They were paid to do that and they were uh, inside the commission and plenary session in the parliament just working as the member of the parliament. So they have all the advantages, they have uh, uh, data, uh, information, services, uh, uh, capacity to mobilize experts, and after they, they had to, to work and uh, build a um, uh, consensus uh, declaration of 10 pages after the five days, so they have to work hard to do that. They were only the only one to write. And after they discussed their paper with the members of the parliament in plenary session, not uh, uh, on a, a single day, but a real plenary session with the record of the parliament. And after they have to discuss with the president of the government and the vice president of the government about the, the things. And they ask, they took some engagement to the declaration and the, the people, the citizens, ask to uh, have a new meeting one year later with all the government and the parliament to uh, assess <coughs> the engagement they were taken by the, the government and the, the, the parliament and to, to to ask accountability to this, this point. So that, that's a, a new way for me of governance, including the, the people and trying to make the elected people, I prefer the word elected people than the politician, uh, to uh, more closer to the citizen, the media had to uh, take in that into account and inform the whole population of what happened then. That's more difficult. Just one point to, to explain what we are doing in, in a, a kind of experience about uh, governance. For the session, uh, I, want, I have gathered some uh, materials. Uh, I will go through very quickly uh, on the, to remind you on the models of governance, but many have been said this morning, so uh, after I will try to, quite quickly also, to present six mutations impacting governance, drivers have been uh, uh, presented this morning, so I will go uh, quickly. And 
perhaps ask ourselves about a model of governance for the agenda 2030 of the uh, Sustainable Development Goals. You can stop me when you want. So the, the model of governance, just to remind you that we talk about the uh, Club of Rome this morning, uh, the, the model of governance were really carried in the 19th by the uh, Club of Rome and the uh, international uh, and some international uh, <coughs> institution. Uh, the, the definition uh, were built progressively. I like this one of Stephen Rosal where uh, to, to say that this is a process whereby an organization or society steer itself by the actors. And it was a family. Yes, yes, yes. The, the role of uh, UNDP was really huge because they had a, a problem in, uh, in Africa, for example, uh, to have a discussion with the, the, some uh, decision makers and they want to extend the partners. So uh, they uh, were in the, uh, very engaged uh, through the, this uh, idea uh, I, I don't know, go to, through all the uh, definition. The, the World Bank, you know, uh, uh, had a, a real role in that uh, de definition in 1999. The European Commission with the, the white paper on governance in 2001. And many, 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 too many um, political scientists with the, the idea of uh, showing that the, the term of governance was a concept, it was said this morning, but carrying the idea of moving from one way of government to perhaps an, another way. And the, 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 the question of the uh, normative uh, sense uh, of the concept is very uh, important. The idea was to go from a classical public administration to a new governance with new tools, networks, and not hierarchy, uh, collaboration, public and private, negotiation and persuasion and not command and control, and uh, enable, enabling uh, skills. You have the same idea to uh, the idea of moving from a Weberian bureaucratic state to a postmodern that, that could be discussed uh, state, so uh, governance was in their uh, view, not hierarchy but heterarchy, uh, positive sum games, diff diffuse power, not concentrate power, pluralist and not elitist, and so on. So the idea of change to uh, a, a new model, and the, the, the model developed by the UNDP were very important because they showed the, the interaction between the different, uh, what they call the stage of uh, governance. You all know this uh, representation, public sector, civil society, private sector, and showing that what's very important is the interaction between the, uh, and the people in the interaction. We all know this is a model, and that uh, that's not reality. And uh, that's more complex that has been said this morning. And to show it, you have the, the Commonwealth Secretary who built another uh, model of uh, governance. And you see they, they talk about seven types of relation, but uh, there are more and more than seven in the, in the graphic. So you know, I think, all that we can uh, think of uh, of the evolution, how could that evolve by the way of the different uh, mutation. Because if you consider that for a, a territory, for a nation state, for uh, a, a, a city or other, you, have, you should have in mind that the, the people involved in the different circle are, are also in interaction with what's uh, happening outside the nation. And for example, uh, for Europe, but the report with the relationship with the uh, European Commission, uh, the, the process of integration of 
uh, in dif different fields, uh, different uh, institu international institutions. If I go quickly through the, the six chains, drivers, uh, I call that imitation, uh, I took six. I think that could have an impact. Naturally, knowledge revolution that had been said this morning. Uh, for me, from the 60s, the trajectory for, from information digital knowledge society, at the imp impact of elevation of the intellectual level of citizen. We talk about social media, huge volume of information, new tools for building communities. I don't know what it's got there, but you, you, you know that. Second point, and the link with the Club of Rome was very strong, the sustainable development with the, an acceleration through the 2030 agenda from, from uh, now and the, the ambition to build effective, accountable and inclusive institution at all, all level and then to add the climate change war, the urgency, we have the IPPC uh, report and so on. As third uh, mutation or change, I put new social transformality. That's the idea of the the, 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 the model itself, <coughs> what Dumézil uh, called the, la trifunctionnalité, the trifunctionnality. And you, you can show the, you can find the, the same model representing the society. Uh, if you go to Aristotle in the letter to Nicomac, uh, if you go to uh, Adam Veron de Lan, for example, uh, in the uh, 21st century, uh, uh, 11th century. If you go to CS in the French Revolution with the idea of uh, noblesse, uh, uh, third state and uh, clergyman. Um, if you go to François uh, uh, Furet, another a French historian who explained the society like, like that. The point is the recognition of the actors and stakeholders promoted by the international institution. And uh, for, for that point, the fact that the companies, the private sector was uh, had a recognition inside the government was very important and the same for the civil society at the side of the, uh, the state. One, for me, acceleration was also the uh, initiative taken by uh, Barack Obama about the open government and all the, what was uh, followed through the idea of open government partnership uh, to, to foster stakeholders' participation, uh, linked with democracy, inclusive growth. You know the, 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 the way OECD uh, uh, try to uh, stress on the uh, movement from open government to open society, city-centered culture of governance, and the three axes, transparency, participation, and co-construction. You can, can find that also at the European Commission and in many other uh, points. I have added two, uh, what I call conservative and populist zeitgeist, um, Tony Blair said in 2006 in his uh, famous uh, speech uh, uh, behind the, the trade union in uh, Brighton, uh, protectionism in the economy, isolation in world affairs, nativism within our society, all in the end mean weakness in the face of the strong challenges. The effect of populism, we've talked about that this morning, the question of the legitimacy uh, of the elected uh, official, the mistrust of the parliament regime, the denunciation of the uh, media, uh, or of the uh, financial oligarchy that would organize the world, all the uh, question that we have in the, that uh, attitude of populism. And I've uh, stressed also 
a very good uh, article from BBC News, uh, from Anthony Zerker, uh, does Trump still think climate change is a hoax? Which is explained that the point is not, the, the fact that, uh, the, the, that he, he confirmed that the hoax or not, but the confusion that he, he is uh, keeping around the idea, around the concept of uh, climate change. We can have also the uh, increased influence of uh, companies, the recognition of their role in the society and in the governance. And to take an example, uh, United Nations Environment Program in uh, June 2014 said companies have been the engine behind the unprecedented economic growth of the past century. The big companies through their operation have managed to raise billions of people from poverty, provide employment and education opportunities and unlock the human potential for innovation and creativity. So that kind of speech is for me quite new in international institutions like the, the UN and in Europe. I think more new than in the United States to have people considering the importance of company, for example, to address the uh, sustainable development goals. Mm -hmm. and, and, and to think that there are more money, more will, and, and more uh, capacity of mobilization, and, and more people now committed in the, the, this kind of issues. So, taking into account the, 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 the six uh, change, uh, but we can add, and you will add a seventh or uh, right? I taken, I have uh, imagined three models of uh, governance. The first generation is the the the, the generation created by the, that new social trifunctionality, the three circle, the uh, influence of sustainable development, the Club of Rome on the civil society and the knowledge revolution impacting on the private sectors and the civil society. I have imagined a second model, a second generation, and then I really think that uh, by the way of the knowledge revolution, uh, a new circle is, is in the center. The universities, the research center, because they were really a problem in the first model that they have no room to, for that because uh, they are through uh, academic freedom they are quite civil society through state because they are uh, funding by the, the state and by the private sector because they go to the market to go, they get money for the con by the consultancy. But they were not a, a, a priori. So I think that through the idea of collective intelligence, they could uh, develop the relationship between, and they are doing that, between the three uh, circles. The other point is the uh, in more influence of sustainable development, and the idea of open government whose impact is more on, on the state because at that moment, I think that 72 or 73 uh, countries uh, are in the Open Government Partnership. And, and, and some uh, uh, important uh, uh, decision makers are involved. I, I, I think of uh, Emmanuel Macron, for, for example, who had a speech at the United Nations with the Open Government Partnership. If I go to the next generation, now and, and after, I, I think that the influence is growing of sustainable development through their uh, agenda, and the influence on states and on civil society of the conservative and populist that gaze is very uh, important, and I put the increased influence of, of companies. So the, the model is moving, probably, but I ask myself how it is moving through the different components. And so I, 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 I asked myself, perhaps we could do the work 
and try to imagine the impact of, of the sixth mutation in progress and perhaps the seventh one on the active of governance. But that takes many time, so I try to to Sorry. to do it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very good. That was great. Woo! And, and, and to, to propose it to your uh, discussion, and to, for if, if I take uh, uh, what has been said this morning, and th that's quite normal, you will say, I think that the question of the trust and the, the, the mistrust is, is very important. It's a very good point. But you, you can see, if I take the conservative and populist gaze, you see impact of the, the state, authoritarianism, liberty see that. Now, uh, on civil society, probably a confusion and handling. On private sector, question about the freedom to oppress. Creation of instability, that's why they are pro probably don't agree with the model and on academic, the, the mistrust probably. But can, we can have a discussion on, the, on this point. That's just material uh, to, to react. And the, 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 the last material is to, going from that, I ask myself, is there a good model? Where is the good model at, at the moment? And uh, I think there is no good model. <laughs> but they are model building. And uh, it was very linked with some remarks done this morning. And uh, I had in mind the, the work done by the United Nations. You, perhaps they are doing something good sometimes. Uh, so we are a member of the uh, consultancy uh, situation of the ECOSOC. And uh, during the 17th session of the Committee of Experts on Public uh, Administration, the CEPER, probably some of you know that, uh, I had the opportunity to, to follow the work last uh, uh, April in, in New York. And uh, they, the, they proposed to the Economic and Social uh, Council uh, three main principles declined uh, in different parts uh, with some definition and uh, illustrated by the use strategies linked to that principle. So you have the first block is effectiveness with uh, principle of uh, competence with some example uh, uh, promotion of the professional public sector workforce, workforce leadership development, training civil servants, and so on. Second, so sound policy making to, to achieve their intended uh, result. Public policy have to be coherent with one more and founded on true uh, well established grounds. With some example, good planning foresight, I like this one. Uh, strengthening a national st statistical system, risk management uh, framework. Collaboration also with uh, the how to coordinate inside the uh, government or inside the, uh, uh, the parliament, the different uh, initiative, how to, to make the actor collaborate between themselves. Second point is accountability with the, the question of uh, the principle integrity uh, and, and some, some, some uh, strategy or like a conflict of interest policy, whistleblower protection and so on. Transparency, more uh, classic, open government data, uh, registries of beneficial ownership, that, that's done now in Wallonia, for example. Uh, independent oversight with uh, the idea of independent audit, respect for uh, legality. Uh, inclusiveness, uh, leaving no one behind with the idea of uh, uh, equitable fiscal and monetary policy, promotion of social equity and so on. Non-discrimination in, in public service uh, or gender response budgeting. 
participation uh, with a multi-level, uh, multi-stakeholder forum, a community-driven citizen panel, for uh, example. Oof. I think my, my, my time is over, probably. That's <laughs> <laughs> artificial intelligence. <laughs> you are terrible, Gary. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm coming back there. Just well, it, 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 it was the, the last slide, I think. So th th this is the last slide. Subsidiarity, and that gave echo to the uh, decentralization of this morning. Uh, intergenerational generational equity. So you, you see a, a set of proposal, uh, principle, and also strategies to the, the, the people. Some are uh, uh, old ones, some are new ones, I think. But that's just a way to open the, the discussion.